Hello folks, it's Rich here. How's everyone doing leading up to Christmas holidays, which is good, whether you celebrate it or not. Like I'm guessing a lot of people have some time off, so that's good news. So, you can see from the title, Classic Vibe versus Fender, uh, Mexican. This has been raging on forever and we'll carry on doing so. The two different types of guitars, really, because most of the Fenders, the old standard series, is a more modern take on it but they're compared to one another because they're both tellies. So, just for reference, there are no guitars in this video. I'm gonna talk for a few minutes, but if you're in the market for either of these, I think what I've got to say is relevant. So first of all, I've had five, I've had five Mexican uh, Fender tellies, two, so I've had three standards and two players wrote, uh, with a mixture of Maple Neck and Rosewood. And in Classic Vibe, I have had six of them which includes Indonesian and Chinese and rosewood fretboards, so the customs, and maple as well in various different colours. So, and as you'll know if you've watched any of my other videos, I've had 160 odd guitars in total, so I had lots of them. Now, I would really like to have another telly. So, I've been thinking about which one. I particularly like the old style brass sort of three saddle setup, you know, ashtray bridge rather than the newer, newer modern type one to get on most vendors really but uh, anyway so I went to a guitar shop not had either of these guitars for at least a year probably probably longer and guitar shop they didn't have a classic vibe out on on display so I asked if they've got one and they turns out they did last one out the back in a box guy came out took it out of the box it's a white blonde which Indonesian which actually the new or the latest white blonde is actually white pink it's not a very nice color I don't think so just be aware of that if you find it off a picture they've got, got a pinkish hue to them Got it out of the box. Uh, first observations when I picked it up, no sharp fret ends, nice. The frets themselves, polished. They could be more polished, but they certainly weren't dirty. They're fairly shiny. You get a bone nut on those, which is nice as well. And the, the fit and finish just felt nice. The glossy neck, at both front and back, not as thick and tacky as I remember it being. Certainly not satin, clearly not. But uh, anyway, so I plugged it in. They gave me a Katana Mark II, 50 watts of a little play with. So I plugged it into that and just loved all the tones. Nice, the switch felt good. The volume and tone pots, but the resistance in terms of uh, friction rather, you know, when you turn them, felt the same on each. I didn't have a play with the tuners because the guy tuned it for me, but I know, I know what they're like. They're okay. And it just sounded lovely. The neck on it, quite a bit thinner than a Mexican Fender. So if you've got, like me, you've got sort of, I've got medium kind of size hands, I would say. If you've got medium or small hands, it's a joy. If you've got big hands, you probably wouldn't want it, or, or unless you like a thin neck. But it's a it's a thinner, smaller neck, so it's really comfortable to play. And the action straight out of the box, because <laughs> it literally unboxed it there and then, it was perfect. It was low. Didn't notice any buzz, but then again, it was it was plugged in, so unplugged. Maybe there was some somewhere. Don't know. But I was just really impressed with it. I thought, great. 379. Quite strong money these days, but all guitars have gone up, haven't they? And, but it was still a great guitar. And actually, that glossy neck didn't feel too glossy or prohibitive to play and it actually had a, a nice feel to it it felt like a bit more luxurious somehow and it was you know the light shining above and it was glistening and yeah it felt really good then he went and then he said to me uh, i've got a player telly fender player telly on a peg i'll go and get it and he's gone a good 10 minutes he came back said sorry i've just had to do some neck relief on that and do a very light setup for you picked it up immediately the fret not about to cut my fingers but the fret ends weren't finished the same as the Squire, and you hear this a lot when you see reviews on Fenders anyway, so that's a bit of a disappointment. And it's a satin neck on it, it was a butterscotch one, so a nice colour. And so, anyway, I plugged it in, moved the switch, the little tip, the switch tip came off of my hand, <laughs> and uh, only a little thing, but hey, you know, £719. That now you can get them cheaper, get them about 650 but they, that's the kind of way they're going. In guitar, guitar, they, a lot of the Fenders are around the 700 ish mark now, so. Crazy, and I've said this before. For what is, it, yes, it's a good sort of steady, basic guitar, but it's a basic guitar. You think of some of the other things out there for seven hundred pounds, what you can get, especially in budget guitar land. Jesus, you get all sorts of stuff. But anyway, to plug it in, I didn't really like the sound of it. Uh, I know it's more modern, and uh, I remember this one I had my last one. Yeah, that that kind of tone is not really for me. But it's a much brighter kind of sound, whereas the fifties classic vibe is more vintage. How I wanted it to be so that that is subjective of course but for me I preferred the sound of the classic vibe and the playing experience you know it's a much thicker neck on the fender and whilst it's a satin neck didn't feel overly well finished or under finished it just it just nothing about the guitar felt special to me you know the, the, the 
of the bridge on it. It's basic. Just the whole thing just didn't feel special, and the QC wasn't great. You get plastic nut on those as well, a bone nut on the on the classic vibe. So, well, that's all I'm trying to get at here, really, is if you're in the market for one or the other, the classic vibe is still roughly half the price. I mean, you can get some of those for three, three nine. I've seen this one was three seven nine from Guitar Guitar, and likewise, you can get uh, fenders for more like six fifty or something like that. So, but it is it's roughly it's roughly half the price. So. If it's you want a telly and you want it to sound like a telly and play like a telly, then I think this, for me the Squire is, is is the way to go. You know, it gives you money left over if you if you really want to put if there are pickups that you particularly like or if the electronics are of a concern in any way or if you're someone who gigs, then you know you've got money spare for that. Whereas with the Fender, you probably still want to do something to it, wouldn't you? you um, yeah. So it was, the Fender was disappointing, but I had it in my mind anyway that I was likely to get. A, a classic vibe because of, because of the bridge. If I wanted that in a Fender, then that would be an old classic series, one or a 60s Fender, and secondhand they'd cost a fair, fair bit if you can find them, you don't see as many of them. And if I wanted one with that bridge new, it'd be the Vintero series, which is about 950 or something crazy like that, 950 quid. So yeah, so there you go. Squire and Fender Mexican when it comes to tellies, well worth having a play on both. If you can't go to a shop and find one wherever you are, just uh, order one online, have a, have it at home for a week or more, have a good play with it, send it back uh, and order a Squire. Or if you can order them both at the same time, you know, if you can put it on your credit card or something, just temporarily so you can have the two and have a feel. It's well worth doing. Don't just go, I want the Fender Mexican and dive straight in because well, I just don't feel like they're a great value. That's it. Let me know what you think, as Steve uh, Castillo would do in the comments. <laughs>